right, everybody, how are you doing? Hopefully uh, uh, today, Monday, is going well uh, for you. And uh, well, I'm excited that you guys are here. And most importantly, I'm excited for what is going to happen to you over the next few days that we have together. We have an immense, and I do mean a lot, of content to share with you that will begin to change your financial future. Now, I know a lot of people say things like that, and but ultimately, I want to make sure that you have an understanding of what is in my brain about not only short-term rentals, but most importantly, your real estate career. And in the time that we have uh, together, I want to make sure that you treat it with the appropriateness that it deserves, because ultimately, uh, what is going to happen for a number of people is that, well, their their lives are going to be different. Now, I am not saying that just to say that. I'm saying that based upon uh, what has happened for a number of people who have been sitting in the, I would say the same chairs, but, you know, obviously it's a different chair because you're watching on your devices uh, everywhere you are. And that's exactly, but that's what they did too. They did the exact same thing just a few weeks ago. Okay, I just want to be clear uh, that individuals uh, just a few weeks ago who were sitting where you are have begun their short-term rental career. And what that means is they made a decision, uh, they they did the homework assignments, they listened, they showed up, they engaged, they typed in the chat, they did all kinds of things to put themselves in the absolute best position that they could to make sure that they did not miss the opportunity that they are now today taking advantage of. All right. So as we go, hopefully we'll be able to hear from some of them. You'll probably see some of them in the chat. And in fact, if this is your first time here seeing me live in any way, shape or form, do me a favor. Just type the word new in the chat. You are probably being tagged by someone right now as well, because we want to make sure that we all connect. Right. So it is imperative tag in the in the chat so that we know that you're here. And most importantly, that you can uh, also participate, for example, we want to make sure that you have your workbook. If you have your workbook or rephrase, um, do me a favor. If you don't have your workbook right now, do me a favor in the chat. What I want you to do is to write the words short term rentals rocks right now in the chat. Now, while you're doing that, though, I want to show you this. Now, I'm showing you this mostly uh, because I know how some of how some people are. I mean, some people are very skeptical. There's very whatever. And, and again, that I'm not doing this for any other reason be, to help you get out of your own way and understand that when I say words like this is a multi seven figure a year business plus, you know that I am talking from a place of experience, not hope, not based upon what I think I is possible, but what I know to absolutely be true. Not only for me, but also for you. Now, the fact that you may have never done that is irrelevant to me, but what it should be is confidence, confirmation, helping you become and step into the person that I believe that's inside. So we're going to work on that over the next uh, few days together that we have. And he here's the challenge. The challenge uh, with this is that I don't have as much time as I'd like uh, to have with you, right? I I'd like to have a, a, a lot more time than I actually uh, do. Meaning when what it comes down to is that I've got to be focused and so do you. But we're going to be focused together in the process of helping you become bigger, better, badder, just a little bit more of an entrepreneur than you were before you got here. All right. And in understanding that we, we have all of the content uh, that is prepared for you coming over the next uh, couple of days. In fact, let me show you this because I just want to make sure that you that we're all well, that you're in the right spot, you're in the right group. And that you are expecting all that we're all expecting the same thing is that right we are in the uh, six figure short term rental masterclass as you can see. Oh, I put the wrong one up first. <laughs> Sorry, 
That's funny. There we go. Monday, Tuesday. So why your short-term vision and story is important. And then, uh, um, and then same thing on Tuesday, we've got at the same time, uh, following the process and tracking your progress. So we're going to be going through all of the steps uh, as we go to helping you get your short-term rental business uh, off the ground. And we want to make sure that you guys are prepared to do that. Now, part of that preparation is you having your workbook because your workbook, this is the page you should be on right now. You should be on page number one, why short-term rentals. We're going to talk about that uh, to, to say the least, um, you know, and, and that's really what, what, that's just really one of many, many important things that we're going to go through. So as you have this, uh, you should be filling it out. And again, if you, for some reason, don't have it, here's what you're going to do. You're just going to type in the chat. Or sorry, you can go to cashflowdiary.com forward slash workbook. We should be able to get that to you. Or again, type in the chat, short-term rentals rock. What will happen is one of the individuals uh, that are here to support you uh, will be able to give you the workbook. So we have actually with us, we have Corinne with us. We have Stephanie. We also have um, Robert and Jeremy and we got John and we got, <laughs> we got um, Wendy. They're all here to support you on your journey to becoming a bigger, better, better short-term rental operator. All right. What does that mean? When we're talking about becoming a short-term rental operator, um, then one of the things that we have to do is to make sure that you understand not only what the business is, how the business works, but how to take care of some very basic things. For example, I know some of you, you've got questions around the uh, landlords, right? Or why not own the property? And where's the money coming from? And who knows what else? And oh, most importantly, what, what about this whole COVID thing, Jay? Uh, is that still like aren't short-term rentals dead now? Well, we're going to answer many of those questions over the next few days. So make sure that it's blocked out. Make sure that you are ready uh, so that we can uh, give you exactly what you need. All right. What does that mean? That means I want to give you an understanding of why short-term rentals, in my opinion, make the most sense, not only for you, but for anyone who has ever considered getting involved in real estate investing. What that looks like is helping you to understand that I started my real estate investing career back when the uh, great, uh, they call it, was it the great recession? That's what they call it now. Anyway, that's when I started. We were squatting in bank owned property. Our credit score was 398. We did not have any... <laughs> investment capital. There was no way to to necessarily begin real estate when you look at it from the outside in. And again, in a very similar fashion, there was a lot of people who were losing real estate at that time, uh, be it their houses or their rental properties for various reasons. Okay. Various reasons. Now, this time right now is very similar to that in a lot of ways, but I want to be very focused with you and just share with you that what it comes down to, though, is your ability to see and to recognize the opportunity. So what is going to happen for you today and on many days forward is that I'm going to help you recognize the opportunity. That's my job is to help you recognize the opportunity in the time that we have. So when you're looking at your workbook, again, what I want to make sure that you understand is that this workbook has value. Now, it has its most value when you complete the answers and then do what it says. <laughs> okay, we'll give you the assignments. That's the most value. But you will also have value for many of you and you'll find out how much on Thursday. Okay, so you will have value uh, for some of you and you'll find out on Thursday. So you're going to want to make sure that not only that you have the answers, but you have all of the correct answers uh, as well. If for some reason you happen to miss uh, some information, then what you'll be able to do is you'll be able to go to the unit section. So the unit section um, is right, not, not that one. It's right there. So if you happen to be, uh, it, when you're in the Facebook group, if you go right under discussion, you can click it right there. You'll be able to see the unit section so that you can catch up. So what does that mean? 
That means we will have your recaps will be there. That'll these videos, this video will be there, uh, or the videos from future sessions will also be there. You will also find your homework assignments there. You should also find any special handouts that we happen to give. I will tell you today does have a special handout, so you will need to go to the unit section as well. And let me see the so your workbooks, everything basically it'll be there. All right, if that makes sense. Okay. Now, having had the privilege of doing real estate across multiple different um, uh, states in the United States and all kinds of different transactions, and to give you guys uh, some reference, uh, we, I mean, there, I've had the privilege of of doing a lot of different types of real estate in, in many different ways and, and whatnot. And what I want to do, though, is make sure that we start this by just understanding what that looks like, specifically what that means. Because sometimes you just don't know. Like, if you don't know that this is what I, I have done because we have never met, again, that's no fault uh, of yours. But what I do want to do is see if I can't get this, because if I can get this to play very simply, okay, we'll do it this way, because that is not playing the proper way right now, because that's just how it works, but that's okay. I will get it to play. But I want to play this video really, really quickly, just to give you guys a background a little bit on me, and then we're going to come back, uh, because the real estate world is, well, it's huge. And I want to make sure that you guys understand that we're only going to be talking about a very small part of it intentionally because it is the part of the real estate world that I think everyone should start in. And those who have started with us and started specifically in this particular piece of real estate, this version of real estate, have been able to put themselves in a stronger position of owning real estate long term. So do me a favor. In fact, if you are one of those individuals who has a desire that at some point in time that you wanted to own real estate long term, uh, tell me like in the chat right now, how many, how, either how many units or what type of real estate, meaning was that commercial? Were you thinking about land? What, what was the, we'll call it your real estate aspirations, if you will. Um, what, what is it that you were feeling, thinking, wanting uh, to make happen from a real estate perspective, because I, I am curious to know what it is that, or if there was a particular strategy that had your mind and or attention. And what we'll be able to do is to make sure that as we go over these next couple of days that I'm able to tie some of my, either my own experience or the experience that uh, applies to the types of strategies that you are considering to short-term rentals as well, because we want to make sure that, again, everything's 100% uh, percent relevant. So I definitely want to make sure that we see that, uh, that we see that too. Okay. And then I'm just checking. Uh, I'm also, <laughs> I bet, I bet there's been a number of you who recently you've been attending a lots of either Zooms or Facebook things and lives, and you've learned just how often or how frequently um, things don't go exactly as planned. And when you press a button, sometimes that button just doesn't do the thing it was supposed to do. But that's all good. It's all good. And nonetheless, make sure, though, that when right after this video, you'll have your workbook. If you don't already, cashflowdiary.com forward slash workbook. OK, so that way we have that. Make sure you type in the chat the type of real estate so that we're talking about. Ah, Mark, I see what you're talking. What is this? A condo? in a mountain town paid for, got it. Uh, you need a $90,000 for, there's a $90,000 for a down payment. Now that's a serious condo. I like it. Okay. It definitely sounds, um, it sounds almost like a California condo <laughs> in that regard. I like that one, Mark. Oh, what, sorry. I missed this one. What is this? Worked on wholesale. Okay. That's how it's actually how, and well, uh, we'll get into that. Uh, ultimate aspiration is multifamily ownership and eco retreats. I'm not quite sure what you mean by eco retreat because there's two ways of going with that. I don't know if you mean like it's a lead building, like it's lead certified in, in some way, shape or form where you have a retreat or a retreat that is just about the ecology 
I, I'm not quite sure. I'm not quite sure what, where you're going with that one, but I like it. I like it. Anyway, um, the, here we go. I think it's going to work this time. So let's do this and we will be overly started here. got into real estate, it's, it's rather an interesting story. How I got into real estate, it's, it's rather an interesting story. Uh, I, it's not typical. It wasn't because I woke up one day and said, hey, I can't wait to be a real estate investor. For me and my wife, it was, it was kind of different. A few short years ago, I was a financial planner doing, doing you know, financial planning stuff, and I enjoyed that. I love helping people. That's what I learned from being a financial planner. I also learned that I could take something that is perceived to be complicated and make it simple. Well, that was good. Some of the challenges, though, was that my, my wife, when she's pregnant, she has a condition known as hyperemesis. And if you've never heard of that, uh, I don't blame you because I hadn't heard of it until it happened. We were in a situation that we were unfamiliar territory all of a sudden immediately. It simply means she couldn't eat or drink while pregnant. She almost died a few times and I was freaking out. And one day, because I was freaking out, I went to try to blow off steam and, and I went to play volleyball. While playing volleyball, well, I jumped high and I landed on a guy's head and punctured my lung. And that made it worse. I have asthma and I developed pleurisy. Together with the drug interaction, I was unable to walk and talk simultaneously without fainting. So all of this was going on and People were, my, a friend came to me and said, you should become a real estate investor. I'm like, uh, really? <laughs> that did not make sense. But I listened, I went, you know, and I'm glad I did. Uh, even the way we started, we had a credit score of 398, couldn't put $75 together, but I didn't let what we didn't have stop us. It was one of the first times I've ever made a decision like that. Since then, um, you know, getting started in real estate, we've been able to do hundreds of transactions in many different states and been able to help lots of people, lots of families provide clean, safe, affordable housing. We provide jobs uh, and we've got commercial property and international interests now. And it's, it's just amazing what's possible when you begin to believe. And that's kind of, I think, what I want to say is that maybe now it's time for you to begin to believe because you never know what you're going to be doing. You don't know that you, you could meet the very person that is your role model. You don't know whom you're going to be able to impact. But here's what I do know. Your story's not over. Take it one day at a time because you don't know who you can become until you're forced into a situation to try. I just wanted to feed my family. I still, that's all my goal. I just want to eat. <laughs> I want to make sure my kids eat. I want to make sure that we have, you know, occasionally get to go have some fun, get to go do some things. I don't think that's asking for too much. But now it's, it's turned into more. I've been able to help lots of people, either one-on-one -on -one in our group sessions. Uh, I've been able to uh, help people get their first properties. I've been able to help people get their first single-family houses, multi-family houses, and many have even invested with us in, in various different capacities. You know, a few years ago, I promise you, I would have never had that thought that this would be what I was doing, but it is. I guess it's worth beginning to believe. All right. Oh, yep. I got it. Perfect. So, um, that is just to say that real estate is, it's been my thing for a while, right? Uh, my kids are much older than what you just saw there now. And, and it, it is what it is. But the, the point though, is knowing everything that I know today, real estate, um, it's clearly the place to be, but the strategy that I would start with, I started out as a wholesaler, I know what I know today that short-term rentals is the way to make that happen. In fact, traditional real estate investments, uh, they build wealth. They do not build income. I'll say that again. It builds wealth. It does not build income. Also, when you're operating as a traditional real estate investor, you are limited by the geography in various different ways. Now, yes, obviously the, the, the property is where it is, but there are different things because there is a lack of resources when once the, the property is built. Meaning, if 
Some of you, you live in places where the real estate in and of itself, the land is inexpensive. And if the land is inexpensive, sometimes the job base is not as diverse or as deep, uh, et cetera, which lends itself to not having all of the type of resources you need to go out there and actually build a sustainable, strong business. And you may want to not have to babysit every property because that's part of your vision, right? And that was part of mine is that I, I didn't want to have to work and, and continually maintain and manage and do that type of stuff over and over and over again. So I wanted to make sure that when we built a business, it was a business that gave us the, the, the freedom, the location independence, if you will, at the end of the day. And then once you have a piece of real estate, transitioning that asset can be a challenge depending on what stage of life you're in. You're finding that out right now. You're like, you're wow, how do I, which of my kids or children or how on earth am I going to build this legacy in some way, shape or form to, to make this work? Because I, I don't want to have strap somebody down, right? If that makes sense. And all of those things are great. And real estate is awesome. Except there are certain things about the business model that, in my opinion, no longer make sense. It does not make sense for someone who, who has a, the least amount of experience right now to go out there and get a 15, 20, 25, 30 year mortgage when it's your first transaction. Now, I'm not saying debt isn't cheap right now. I'm not saying that. I'm saying based upon your experience, you would not, like, for example, if this was your day one, day one driving a car, you should not get into a high performance vehicle like a Porsche or a Lamborghini or maybe even a Tesla, you know, that should not day one right now start there because the vehicle in this case requires more skill than you have at the moment. You wouldn't fly a plane on the first day or a helicopter on the first day. Our military doesn't give you the gun. I mean, you know what I'm saying? There are so many things where we understand that our level of experience matters before we take a quote unquote big risk. Yet we often start with our real estate career, taking a risk of a 30 plus year financial commitment without understanding some of the basic things like the job market, by the way. A, a long-term real estate portfolio is heavily dependent upon the job market that it is near, all right? That it is heavily dependent upon the job market that is near. So w one of those things uh, that over time began to bug me because we, when, when you have a, a real estate portfolio out of state, but you live somewhere else, you, you can be in a position in which you cannot affect as much change as you might want in your own local area. And we want it to be able to provide local jobs. So this was one of the drivers to why short-term rentals made sense is because I wanted to be able to do something locally. Plus I wanted to be able to take my kids, um, in, in such a way to train them, to help them see, this is what dad does, right? He, he doesn't just make videos at home. He doesn't just have a podcast. He doesn't just, you know, go speak on stages. This is the business. We're providing clean, safe, affordable housing to people that need it when it matters most. That's what we do, right? And then when it comes down to it, most landlords, especially when it comes down to their long-term rentals, they're losing money. Now, they were losing money before the, the whole situation. Now, you will hear me say over the next couple of days, BC. The words are BC. It's before coronavirus, BC, all right? So if you hear me reference BC, that's what I'm referring to. I'm talking about the time before uh, coronavirus, right? So they were already losing money before. Here's what I mean. Oftentimes, when you have a long-term real estate portfolio, yes, you may be renting the property. Yes, it may be technically profitable. However, repairs happen, maintenance happens, things happen, which often remove the cash flow you thought you had from the equation. So if you had $100, $200, $300 a month, whatever it is on that house, a plumbing leak, a roof repair, a this, a that, <laughs> a pandemic. Many different things can come to take that cash flow that you thought you had and make it go away. 
This happens primarily because of the debt service, the mortgage on the property. Now, I am not telling you to go buy properties without using debt or to try to buy them free and clear. That is not what I'm saying either. All right. The debt has its purpose and its purpose is often used to control the asset just long enough so that you can build that equity over time. But it's not to necessarily build the the cash flow part. OK, we use it. We, we do that with a different uh, income generation tool. And that's exactly why short term rentals uh, make sense. They make further sense because it's a direct response to consumer behavior. All right. It's a short term rentals are a direct, like literally direct response to consumer behavior. I didn't start the sharing economy <laughs> at all. Uh, and it's been going for years. All right. That, so, Cause that's why Uber, that's why Lyft. And just think about it. How much more progress has the sharing economy as a whole made because of the coronavirus situation? Let me explain. How many of you have ordered either food hot or groceries now because of coronavirus? Think about it. How many of you have uh, gotten used to, you know, ordering this way now, right? Some of you may not even go back <laughs> to the old way of doing things. Consumer behavior is what drives an economy. I'll say that again because it's important. It is literally everything. Consumer behavior is what is driving, is what will drive, is what will continue to drive uh, an economy. Consumer behavior is also why there is a quote unquote problem in many of the economies of states and geographies that are saying, hey, open up, right? Now, I'm not here to politicize or, or argue, should they be open, should they be closed? And ultimately it doesn't matter. And I do not care about what the situation is. Because the only thing that matters is what is my consumer doing? What is their behavior? So, so do me a favor. There will be a number of times where we do things like this. Someone write this in the chat. <clears throat> Without demand, there is no money. <laughs> All right. Write that in the chat. No demand, no money. Period. Because that is the thing to understand. If your customer, if your state is open, the business is open and everyone is like, yay, we're here and we're open. But your customer does not want to feel safe to use your product or service. They will not. Therefore, they will not part with money unless it is absolutely necessary that they have to. Here's one of the best parts of this whole equation is that housing has, is, and always will be absolutely necessary. There is no working around it. You are a human being, and human beings for quite some time have enjoyed having a roof over our heads. So do me a favor, because <laughs> I'm curious. How long have you enjoyed having a roof over your head? Like, when do you, like, let me say it differently. When do you think people will stop wanting a roof over their head? What type that in the chat? Like how many years from now do you think that's going to be? See, the, the my point is simple. We are dealing with housing. Short-term rentals deals with housing. I am making this distinction because here's what I also know you've been witnessing. You've heard, you've seen, you've thought about well, but Jay, what what about the 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 airlines? You know, they they're having they're having trouble, aren't they? Yeah, they 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 are. Yeah, they they are. Okay. Uh, what what about the the um, uh, cruise lines, Jay? What about the cruise lines? Aren't aren't they having trouble? Yep, they they sure are. And and the hotels also um, having having trouble uh, seeking help in in many different ways. Uh, but but Jay, doesn't that mean then? that short-term rentals, aren't, aren't they having trouble? And that's where you're here, is to understand. See, you, you don't have a 
Airbnb business, which is the popular term that's out there. You've never had it. You have a short-term rental business. Someone write that in the chat, right? <laughs> because that's the truth. You have a short-term rental business. You provide housing on a temporary basis. Please drill that in your head because if you fail to understand that, you will miss this window of opportunity. Now, I say that with lots of intensity and excitement because right now is a very exclusive window that honestly, I hope never comes back because it took a pandemic to bring it. <laughs> I don't want another one, right? <laughs> that is not what I am after here. What I'm after is to help you become a bigger, better, badder entrepreneur. And you do that by understanding that there are problems. And when there's a problem in the marketplace, your job, my job, our job together is to solve it. The bigger the problem, the bigger the solution there's required. The bigger the solution that's required, guess what that means? The bigger the financial opportunity also on the back end, as well as the impact. So we're gonna share with you a number of very simple techniques, simple techniques that you can do. And just because the techniques might be simple, that does not mean the impact is not the same. It does not mean that just because the technique is simple, that it does not earn hundreds of thousands of dollars on a monthly basis. It does not mean that. It does mean, however, that you can do it. It does mean that if applied, proper sequence, proper strategy, proper order, you can do it excellently. It also means that the first time you've done anything, you weren't very good at it. So if you right now have the expectation that you're going to stay with us over these next 10 days and at the end of those 10 days or what have you, you're going to somehow be a millionaire, you might as well leave. Because the only way that's happening, buddy, is if you already are. And if you already are, you didn't even need me to say that. Because you already know. Right? Can it happen over time? Absolutely. Will it happen for some who are here today? Probably. Depending on how they respond to what is happening. Understand, that is what is making the difference for those uh, short-term rental operators who are being successful when? Yes, right now. When I say right now and all that stuff, what I mean is there are individuals who weeks ago, not months, not years, weeks ago, during all of this crazy going on, were watching me talk to them just like you. And now, today, have one, have two, or even three locations that they are building, actively putting out into the marketplace for use. Just understand that, my friend, is why I hope you're here. It's because you're willing to build over time. And yes, I did say weeks. It doesn't mean it's going to happen for you in weeks, but it does mean that many people have done it in a few weeks. So it is possible we will do our best to help it become more probable. And it starts with this understanding of why it works. Because see, if we don't work on the mental side of this particular business because of the frequency of the bad news, what's going to happen is you're going to believe CNN, also known as constant negative news. You're going to believe them. And as you believe them, you will see less and less opportunity. As opposed to understanding that, Here's, here's one big thing to take away today. Un my number one lead source, ready? Is actually the news. Let me tell you why. Simple. The news, for free, multiple times every day, and in great detail, tells you what's broken, where the problems are, how big the problems are, who they think caused the problem. And if you, the entrepreneur, are willing to solve the problem, then there's an opportunity there. They do it every day. Every day. Very consistent. 
Now, are they sharing that information with the intent to help you and I understand that there's an opportunity? No, that's, that's not their intent. However, that is the reframe. That is how I view it. I look at it going, hmm, can I fix that? Hmm, I know someone who can fix that. Mm, can't fix that one at all, but I hope somebody fixes it. Oh, that's a great opportunity. Do you understand? Because when you transform those types of things, you begin to see opportunity, honestly, too many places. And that's the challenge with real estate is that I want to get you focused on this opportunity that is in front of you. Because part of the challenge when you have a large real estate portfolio, as I said, It builds wealth, not income. And when you are building wealth with income to come later, you when you run into a challenge with cash flow or revenue or rents or whatever, you run the risk of losing all of that precious equity. Hear me, someone write this in the chat. Equity doesn't buy groceries. It doesn't. I'll say it again. Equity doesn't buy groceries. Now, if I haven't offended the real estate people yet, this one might. The Burr strategy, B-R-R-R-R, where people are talking about buy them and rehab and then refinance and rent them and all that stuff, is broken. Burr is broken. Let me tell you why. It relies upon. The linchpin is, can I refinance it? If I can't, I'm stuck, and that's the problem. Now, I'm not saying that you can't right now, but I'm saying that putting your financial future in the hands of a refinance could become a challenge for you in the future, costing you everything that you've already sacrificed and built. For all of these reasons and more, this is why short-term rentals makes the most sense. Period. Because maybe you have noticed, and if not, I'll say so right now, they are printing money faster than you and I can earn it. And again, not trying to be political, just factual. They're printing it faster than we can earn it. So now that means when you do build an income, it needs to be able to adjust for that. It needs to be able to account for a loss of purchasing power. What do I mean when I say that? I mean, You lose purchasing power. We lose purchasing power every time more money is printed. More currency, I should say, is printed. Every time that happens, your dollar, peso, renminbi, everything doesn't go as far. All of it. What used to cost a dollar Now you have to spend two. What was three is now six. And all you have to do is look at things like the cost of education and the cost of uh, medical care to realize that when you see CNN or CNBC or any of them say inflation's quote unquote only 2%, it does not take a genius to figure it out that it's a lot higher than 2%. And... What we have to do is play the game. I'm not here to fight the game. I can't correct the game. Not trying to. I'm going to teach you how to play it, though. How to play it in such a way that you, you, that person right there who used to believe in a lot of great things for themselves, who life may have come and beat you up, who indeed may be laid off right now and is having challenges believing that something is still possible for them. Yeah, I'm talking to you. That you are the person who can put together using the simple techniques that will have great impact a multiple six and seven figure business starting today. See, short-term rentals are, (laughs) they're just leveraging technology in a way that, um, honestly, most people in the real estate world are completely ignoring. 
Like they're just ignoring it. And to to be clear, short term rentals is aren't new. They're it's not like I invented it. It's not a new way of even using real estate. Um, it used to be a requirement a long time ago to even get a mortgage <laughs> that you would have a second uh, dwelling on the property so that the bank knew that hey, I can make I can make the payment. I even have this extra dwelling here that we can rent out. That was a qualification. Just think about just think about the difference in thought and change since then. Anyway, what you must understand fundamentally, though, is because I've beat up real estate now. I've talked about the wealthy income, all that stuff. Short term rentals at their core. They produce twice the normal income as a traditional rental. Someone write that down. We're talking 2x the normal rental income twice. Now, that does not mean the expenses double as well. And therein lies the secret. Because the expenses only go up approximately 10%. But the income doubles. So let me say that differently. Imagine right now that you're earning, and I'm making up numbers, but you're earning $5,000 a month. But your expenses are $5,000 a month. But what I'm saying is now you earn $10,000 a month, but your expenses only go to $5,500 a month. Everything else stays the same. The amount of work you're doing every day stays the same. That is the situation that happens with short-term rentals. And here's why it happens. It happens because we repackage time. Write that in the chat. Short-term rentals repackage time. A traditional landlord does what I like to call the lazy and or wholesale way. They will wholesale 365 days all at once on one contract and accept payment every 30 days. That is the agreement. They have agreed to sell up front 365 consecutive days on one document and accept payment every 30 days. What we do, a short-term rental operator, what we do is We can sell the same 365 days, but we sell them one day at a time and we can put each day on a separate contract if we have to. And we accept payment every day. (laughs) That's how that works. Okay. Now, the difference is building an efficient system that allows you to do so without losing control of your time, without feeling like you have to be attached to your phone, without losing sleep, without uh, compromising the security of the guest, without making, making sure that you are still following all of the good neighbor policies, doing everything you possibly can to build a very successful brand. That's what we're talking about, is how over time, You become that person, regardless of your ability to, or whether you've taken a class in a, what's it called? Marketing? (laughs) Yeah, that's the word. Uh, Whether you've taken a class in marketing, I don't care about that. That's irrelevant. Uh, Whether you graduated high school or high school or college for that matter. I have a PhD, by the way. Um, So don't like, you know, it is what it is. By the way, that means a public high school diploma. So that we're clear. That's what I got. And because of that, it just hopefully means you can do it too. Because the math is simple. And it's no different than what you've already seen with a vending machine. Just think about a vending machine for a second. Because it's the same thing. You buy a case of water, say from Amazon or somewhere, and you then take that same case of water. You do nothing to the water. It's still water. Right, You don't change the fundamental aspects of the water. However, you do change the location of the water. You do change the temperature of the water. And you change the packaging that the water comes in. 
And now suddenly, because you've done those three things, the same water, you bought 24 for $5, but now you can sell each one for $2 in a vending machine. So yeah, you, you probably have a little bit more expenses, but not that much more. Understand, if that is the ratio we're talking about, you bought 24 bottles of water for $5, and now you sell 24 of them for $2. So what cost you five, you made 48. Now there's a cost to the vending machine, there's a cost to the electricity, there's, a co- there's more cost, so you don't get to walk away with all $43, but you walk away with a whole lot more. And you've taken very similar risk. My biggest point to you is that short-term rentals make sense because we've developed a three-phase system. Phase one is just teaching you how to simply get one. That's all we want you to do. Get your first location. Because once you have your first location and you do so by leasing it, not purchasing, the amount of upfront cost just went from all up here to way down here, right? That means it's now accessible to more people. Then to close that first transaction, it's not even more, it's not complicated because you've signed a lease before or you've seen it done. It's very easy. You go to a person, anyone, and you sign a lease. Now, there are uh, qualifications for not only for the lease, but also for the property and all these other things. We're going to talk about all that mess. My point is, is it's not foreign. It's not something you cannot do or even haven't done. And then all you're going to do is then break it up the way that I just said and sell it. You're going to resell the same days you just bought. You're going to buy 365 days all at once on one paper or more. You're going to buy those days all at once on one piece of paper with a 30-day payment plan. And then you're going to take those same days and we're definitely going to add some electricity, <laughs> okay? You might add some AC. So yeah, the days will get a little cooler, especially on the inside of the unit. We're going to add some furniture. And then we're going to resell those the exact same days. Same days. And you're going to do that over and over and over again. And what that's going to do, it's going to teach you, give you the experience you need to effectively and profitably run a very large real estate portfolio. But not only that, it's going to do so in such a way without you having to take a 15, 20, 25, 30 year risk. And it's going to give you income that can adjust with inflation. Meaning if they keep printing money, you can be okay. (laughs) Period. Yay. That's a good thing. And ultimately, what it does is it produces free cash flow so that you, me, all of us, can go use that cash flow to control more assets. Type that in the chat. Control more assets. Because that's the key here. See, I didn't say you weren't ever going to get to own real estate. I'm just asking you to delay a little bit longer. You've delayed this far. And I'm asking you to delay just a little bit longer. Because maybe you saved up 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 100, a quarter of a million, half a million. Maybe you just got laid off and you're like, oh my God, I got all this money in my 401k. Can that help? Who knows? But here's what I do know. You've thought about it. It's there and you're not quite sure how to use it. And what I'm saying is use it to build a machine that replaces it that replenishes it, that puts it right back where it was. And then once you've done that, then go buy real estate. Because see, you can then keep buying. You can keep controlling assets because it is your ability to control, here's another word, units of production. 
Type that in the chat. Units of production. It is units of production that is going to protect you and your family and your loved ones and everyone around you. The more units of production that you actually have in production are what's going to be able to produce income for you that's disconnected from a clock. See, real estate in general can feel very, very exclusive, like it's special knowledge hidden and tucked away and only available to the elite. Part of what we do here at Cashflow Diary is bring that all the way down to Main Street because that is what's possible. See, sometimes people think that you and me, we get lucky. Kinda, but not really. What happened is we made a conscious decision to labor under correct knowledge. That's the luck I'm talking about. Laboring under correct knowledge. And what it comes down to is a job does not defend you against inflation. It doesn't. A job does not defend you against taxes. A job cannot provide more money than hours in a day. You don't have enough units of production in order to do it. See, maybe you came a little bit later, but I want to show you this screen again. That screen is possible because of units of production. And that's not all we did in 2019 either. And yes, 2020 has been affected by coronavirus, but it's not, I mean likely going to go up anyway and we'll talk about that okay because see i'm only showing you some of the money for a from a part of the portfolio just enough to drive home the fact i hope that you understand that i mean this i hope that that's what's coming across that i believe that that can be yours too in fact Wealth is for everyone. That means you. Okay? But not having units of production is the key. Let me say it differently. If you have one location, that one location can sell 30 days. Right? That's what it does. It can sell 30 days. Because that's in under the model. That's what you got. You got 30 days. So that means it can bring you 30 days worth of of uh, value. So in the month of May, June, July, December, whatever month, it can bring you the same number of days. But if you've got two locations, now in a month, in a, say June, you, it can bring you the equivalent of two months of value. That's what the business could do. Or if you had three, it could bring three months of value. Four, it brings four months of value. I just think about it. If you got your quote unquote paycheck every month, but every month you got paid four times the amount because you did four times the value to the marketplace, not your employer. Wouldn't that make a difference? The answer is yes. That's what we do step by step. That is what is happening for you right now. It starts up here. And then we get practical and tactical. Okay. So what do you think happens when you have 12 units? When you have 12 units, you know what happens? You bring an entire year worth of value every month. This is why I tell people, take what you used to earn a year or earn in a year. Now imagine doing that every month. And then the magic sauce, if you will, learn to do that on an hour a day of your time. That's the thing. That's the ticket. That's how you put units of production in place, back them up with systems so that you can then, well, put more units of production in place until you get to where you need to go so that you can build a golden goose that lays what I like to call down payment eggs repeatedly systematically, consistently, so that you can go buy and control more assets. Phase one, get one. Phase two, get a lot more than one. Phase three, 
learn to then take that free cash flow, okay, that free cash flow to control more assets. Now, you will need at some point to control more real estate because the downside of this whole thing is that it produces lots of taxable income. Yay. You are not being savvy or smarter or faster by trying to purchase properties sooner. Because when you do that, you rob yourself of return on investment, specifically cash on cash return on investment. That is what we're after. Said differently, if you do have a quarter of a million, half a million, or what have you dollars, when you put those into service as a short-term rental operator, typically between 10 to 18 months, you receive the capital back. But now you have the business and the capital. That's what I'm talking about. The business becomes the goose, the capital becomes the egg, and now that you have it, you now have a new choice. Do I... Do I want to start buying property now or do I put the money right back in and double the size of the business, thus enabling me to go buy even bigger property? Now, I say it that way because that's exciting to some of you. Some of you, all you want to do is just get 10 single family houses. That's also fine. Our most successful student has now purchased two hotels using the exact strategy I just laid out with you. Two. That's uh, two. (laughs) Okay? My, My point is simple. It can be done. It is being done because of the situation that's in front of you. So, the number one question and mistake that most amateurs are making And the question they are not asking is, who do you want to serve? They're just not asking it. See, what happened is that individuals started uh, a Airbnb business. And because they were in front of such a river, dare I say, ocean of opportunity, they just, hey, all you had to do was be present. You didn't have to be good. You just had to be present and you ended up earning money. The marketplace rewarded you for that. Awesome. Well, now being present isn't enough. You have to be good. And that is the biggest difference because you did not take the time, because many individuals did not take the time to understand that they have a short-term rental business, not an Airbnb business. They didn't know or understand how the marketplace changed. That is why so many people you run into today still and probably will for a while go, oh, Airbnb is dead. That doesn't work anymore. You can't do that. Write this down. What you don't know can, has, and always will hurt you. Mama lied on that one, (laughs) right? (laughs) What you do not know can, has, and always will hurt you. And what you don't know is that there's a sick amount of opportunity in this area right now. Because some of our students have been able to serve. Think about it. I'm not even going to be difficult. The military, they're still around, aren't they? They're still changing their duty stations. They're still doing the training thing that they have to do. They still have a need for temporary housing. What about the traveling medical professionals? They also have that need. That's not hard to see, but for some it's impossible. But what about, you ready? What about grandma? You know? the one who's in the skilled nursing facility right now, probably whose you know, neighbor across the hall maybe got it, but grandma didn't. And you know, you, you want grandma to be someplace safe. Well, why not have her isolated at a short term rental? Or you do realize that 
fire and flood, like pipes, they don't care about any virus, <laughs> let alone the coronavirus. They don't care. Pipes are going to burst. And when they do, guess what? They need a place to stay. The family needs a place to stay. There are too many reasons, too many ways, too many things that we can get into. And we are going to, over the next few days, share with you a number of expert tools. Please write this down. Expert tools. But just because you know the tool exists does not mean you know or have learned or have practiced enough to learn to use it expertly. We're going to do our best in the time that we have to make that happen for you. Because that's exciting to me, and hopefully it's exciting to you. Now, here's your homework. You heard me mention more than once or a few times a number of different types of people who are out there who need short-term housing. So what you're going to want to do, and I'm trying to, there it is, you're going to want to get a copy of this worksheet right here. This worksheet is all around who do you want to serve. It is multiple pages. So for those of you who are like, cool, I don't have to do that. I'll just take a screenshot. Cool. You only got like one third of the way done. You're going to want to go get the worksheet and fill it out and answer the questions, okay? And if you've done it before, great. Do it two more times. Because you need a minimum of three different types of customers that you are looking to serve in order to make the business work. The need has not gone anywhere. The need for short-term housing has not gone anywhere at all. Availability has gone down, meaning many people have left, meaning there's less supply. Said another way, you may not realize it, but it's easier than it was before. The marketplace is broken to create your opportunity. Hopefully, you're going to keep joining us to take advantage of it. Now, with all of that fun stuff, being said, what I want to continue to, to share with you is a couple of little housekeeping things and making sure that you guys uh, take advantage. Go to the unit section, right? Here we go. Let me, let me recap because maybe some of you got here a little bit late. It's all right. You want to get over to the unit section. You'll be able to find, watch this video again. You'll find our visual recaps. You'll get your workbook. You'll be able to get all of the special handouts like the Who Do You Want to Serve worksheet that I just mentioned, okay? You wanna make sure that you come back here tomorrow. Why? Because we got more, a whole lot more, all right? For day two, same time. 12 p.m. Uh, Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern. Now, if for some reason you somehow missed more and you want to have another place to go, you can go to cashflowdiary.com forward slash replays. And then lastly, but not leastly, what I certainly hope you have learned today is that short-term rentals make sense for a number of reasons. Leasing them first makes sense for many financial reasons. They provide that very solid foundation for you to begin. And ultimately, regardless of how you wanna begin in real estate, where you start isn't necessarily where you stay. It's not what I did, it's not what you're going to do, but getting started, staying started, and building the skill sets of being an entrepreneur, fundamentally required, cannot be skipped. I look forward to seeing you guys soon. Make sure you tag a friend and bring them back too. It's been fun talking to you guys today. I look forward to talking to you soon. Until next time. <laughs>